Welcome back, Cannonites, for another episode of Cannon Fodder. This week we take a look at Halo Wars 2, some new Halo 5 helmets, and some Ground Command goodies. So let's dive in. We start with a look at a feature I'm really looking forward to in Halo Wars 2, the Mission Logs, or Phoenix Logs. First spotted in the campaign footage posted by various YouTubers recently, these will act as a sort of in-game codex, taking the place of Halo Wars 1's timeline. The example posted in Cannon Fodder is a journal entry from one Nathaniel J. Palmer, an archaeologist stationed on the Ark in April of 2558. With the art that also accompanies each entry, I'm almost more excited for these logs than I am the actual game's story. Almost. Interestingly, Nathaniel notes that Isabel is their new AI. From statements made by 343, we know that Isabel is three years old at the time of Halo Wars 2, meaning she was created in 2556. If she was only stationed at the Ark in 2558, which is noted as being her first assignment, I have to wonder what the UNSC was doing with her for the two years prior. Maybe other Phoenix logs will hold the answer. Moving forward, the next section gives us a look at the swath of classic helmets that we'll be releasing on February 9th. First up is the one I'm most excited for, the Mark V Delta. Mark V Delta helmets are sourced from a cache of Spartan II materials uncovered at the Songnam Special Warfare Center. A few are even etched with the hand-carved ID number of Spartans long since marked MIA. For a while now, I've had this theory that the UNSC is basically pulling out every armor system they can find for the fight against the created. If nothing else, it would explain why we have an almost absurd number of armor permutations in Halo 5. Reading over the Mark V Delta description, along with a couple others, seems to add some credence to that theory, at least in my mind. Next up is the Military Police Helmet. Previously available only to Beta 5 security teams and select Army Rapid Reaction Forces, Military Police Helmets have found a home with Spartan 4 fire teams that requires its hardened uplink, command network module, and remote sensor controller. After that we have Gen 1 Recon. Oni teams responsible for information sanitization operations on created occupied Earth have access to cutting-edge stealth and cyber warfare suites. Among these tools are upgraded and up-armored Recon Gen 1 helmets custom-made for individual operatives. This is one of the cooler descriptions, it's good to know that Oni is doing all they can on Earth. Next is Gen 1 EVA. Few Mjolnir designs can claim to have spun off as many sub-variants as the EVA Gen 1. The enduring popularity of the design is a testament to its reliability, ergonomics, modularity, and tradition of craftsmanship by Materials Group. After that we have Gen 1 Security. Security Gen 1 helmets continue to be used by Misria Armory's executive protection teams after the Covenant War. These helmets have been upgraded to be compatible with Gen 2 systems, though corporate representatives balk at the release of its custom visor. Funny thing, when I read that last bit, I couldn't help but feel like it's a reference to Bungie's ownership of Marathon as the security armor, especially Halo 3's, was based on the armor worn by Marathon's main character. Up next is the Gen 1 Operator. Asymmetrical action groups are cross-branch special forces teams that deter, disrupt, and defeat novel threats to the UNSC. Forced out of the shadows, the Operator Gen 1 helmets worn by these specialists have become available in limited numbers. And following that we have Gen 1 EOD. The unique combination of safety and life support features in the EOD helmet make it an optimal choice for Spartan Assault divers and pioneers who undertake demolition roles. That it also mitigates risk for decapitation is a bonus. Reach's EOD was always my favorite version of the helmet, so I'm glad that's the version we're getting. Next is CQB. The Vigli Klistung system houses the results of its decades-long work with reactionary enhancers and predictive movement algorithms in the protective armor shell of battle-tested CQB helmets. And finally, we have Pilot. Spartan pilots wear flight gear similar to those used before augmentation. Spartan Pilot helmets feature an integral hardened uplink module and classified updates to the UNSC Air Force standard machine interleague firmware. I know they say EVA has the most spin-offs, but seriously, how many helmets do we now have for Spartan Pilots? But anyway, I am hyped for these helmets. I can't wait to get my hands on them, especially the Mark V. The helmets will all be available on February 9th through a unique rec pack. The pack will go for $9.99 USD or 15,000 rec points. Moving forward, the next section brings us to Ground Command news, starting with an announcement for the upcoming Adepticon, which, to my great surprise, is right near me in Schaumburg. Of major note are the Fleet Battles event on Thursday, March 23rd, and the Ground Command event on Sunday, March 26th. After hearing about this, I'm seriously considering going to, at the very least, the Ground Command event. How about any of you? Attending this or anything else at Adepticon? Let me know. For full details on the convention, check out the Adepticon website. 
For details on the Halo events, link in the description box and in the Cannon Fodder article. And speaking of Ground Command, the next section gives us a look at a couple model sets coming to the tabletop game, starting with Sangheili Ultras. The Evocati, or Ultras as human forces know them, are veteran warriors who have demonstrated the highest standards of military proficiency, teamwork, honor, and devotion to the Covenant. These Sangheili display exemplary martial aptitude, but lack the inclination or desire to follow the path of leadership and mentoring. Instead, they find the apex of their warrior career as an Ultra, crowned with glory and guaranteed a position of honor and respect in their family archives and record vaults of high charity. Few remain at this pinnacle for long, and Sangheili promoted to Ultra are expected to take up honorable posts as Seneschals, thread the path of political warfare as a counselor, or return to their ministry to train the next generation of warriors. Ultras rarely answer to the Warhost Command to which they are attached, though some degree of cooperation and synchronization is necessary to achieve their mutual goals. Ultras elect delegates from among their ranks to take on this responsibility before each deployment, and swear binding oaths to obey their commands until all objectives are complete. These Ultra officers hold no official leadership in the Covenant hierarchy and are not obedientaries, but they are acknowledged as subject matter experts in the art of war and wield real authority on the battlefield. In human terms, they are equivalent to a warrant officer, selected for talents and knowledge which complement the tactical objectives at hand. It's pretty awesome to get a Sangheili name for the Ultra rank, and I hope to see that continue with other Sangheili ranks. The other new model coming to the game are the ODST Air Assault Units. Nicknamed Helljumpers, Orbital Drop Shock Troopers ODST, are the Rapid Reaction Force of the UNSC Marine Corps and are best known for their capability to deploy from orbit in meteoric descents using individual drop pods. Each ODST team's loadout is tailored for a specific mission and task, and each operator is proficient with a wide range of weapons, sensors, and mobility systems optimized for hazardous and difficult environments. Operations in the dense, vertically integrated urban centers and rugged, underdeveloped frontiers of Earth's colonial holdings are particularly challenging, and specialized ODST teams can drop in carrying jump jet packs that allow them to more easily navigate three-dimensional jungles of metal, rock, and vegetation. These ODSTs proved their worth in the defense of Reach, securing evacuation areas in New Alexandria and harassing Covenant forces in the rugged mountains outside Manassas to the last round of ammo and final drop of their thruster fuel. ODST officers lead from the front and command their troops with acts of bravery and combat proficiency, for Helljumpers are not impressed by authority wielded without competence, nor are they cowed by threats of administrative punishment. Leaders who can wrangle these men and women are a rare breed and highly valued, yet the utter lethality of their missions mean the life expectancy for ODST officers is demoralizingly short. Though they accept the grim statistics, ODSTs are immensely proud of the fact that most of their officers rose from within the ranks, inspired by heroism and sacrifice of officers who came before, and willing to serve despite the odds. Not a whole lot to talk about, but the one thing I would have liked to see both in these models and in Halo Reach is some ODSTs wearing the air assault helmets. Though the helmet's description in Halo Reach notes that they are exclusively worn by Army Airborne units, the helmets are also described as being an improvement of the classic ODST helmet. The next section is an interview with Alex Irvine, Jonathan Wayshack, and Cody Chamberlain, who all worked on stories in Halo Tales from Slipspace. As always, the article is a nice look at the creative process for these writers and authors and their personal histories with Halo for those that have one. The full interviews can be read in the Cannon Fodder article, which is of course linked below. The article then comes to an end with Hidden Xperia and Covenant Cannon's Blitz card reveal videos and my Cannon Fodder video that also featured an exclusive card reveal. All three are linked on screen if you're interested. And that wraps up Cannon Fodder for this week. There was a lot of awesome packed in there. I seriously can't wait to get my hands on those helmets and I'm seriously considering going to Adepticon now. We'll see. But how about you all? What's got you hyped? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always and until next time, this has been... Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.